hey guys how you guys doing welcome back to the channel thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that we're making for you before we start today's video though i'd like you to please hit the thumbs up button also the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and the notification button it only helps us out and helps the channel grow in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a, a users or a, a subscriber requested video at zorin os 17 i believe is what it is yes 17 and they said that it's okay compared to what i was saying on one of the podcasts so that's what we're going to look at today all right and so here i have zorin os booted up into my virtual machine i'm not installing it on hardware because i have no real inclination to actually use this distribution in any way shape or form i am just giving it a check out a look over you know this is the pro version the gentleman that sent it to me actually uh supports zorn which is great i believe every project should be uh, you know supported but at any instance he wanted me to check it out and so i'm just checking it out and right now i have it spun up into the virtual machine i've clicked the installer i'm using its installer and uh, we're going to go through this guided setup so here we go we're going to hit English is my um, actual language of choice. We're going to hit that. Download updates while they're being installed. Yep. And then we're going to install third party software. That is something that's very important to make sure that you check off because that installs all the codecs that you're going to need to, you know, watch, you know, things online as well as to hear and listen to music and all that good stuff. Do not participate in census. See, now this is some of the reason why I don't like Zorn because they're taking a page right out of Windows book and putting telemetry in. So this is, you shouldn't have to opt out. You should have to opt in. So I'm clicking opting out because I do not want to participate in that. So we're gonna click continue. And now it's preparing the drivers and stuff it's ubuntu based so it's getting all that we're going to erase this disk it doesn't matter there's nothing installed to the disk so we're going to hit that and we're going to hit install the disk and now it's moving forward and so you're if you continue to change the list below da, da, da. yep we're going to do that for sure continue and now it's going to do its thing so now we're going to set our locale which uh los angeles works for me i don't live in los angeles but i live a little bit north of that but it's okay the name we're just going to put in tlt what the heck right same thing for the username for password you know we're going to do a dt style password that is just like so strong and complicated we're going to require the password to log in that makes sense they actually have that checked off which is nice and the password is short but who cares we're going to get OK. And now it's installing away. While it's doing that, I will pause the video. And then when it's done, I will resume. Oh, yeah, just so you guys know, I don't know if some of you guys know or not, but you could toggle this and get this little dialog box down here. That'll let you know that if something goes wrong with your install, Here's where you're going to get an error message, which is vir you know, virtually awesome. I always think that those things need to be not hidden so that that way you know when something happens. It's been about three minutes still installing. Makes me wonder what extra telemetry kind of stuff and bluff it installed in the background. As normally installs don't take this long, but here we go. Still installing as you can see, but we're almost there. Okay, wow, this has been a long time so far, and it's still running. This is insane. I don't even understand why it's taking so long. It's Ubuntu-based. Ubuntu normally installs pretty quickly. This is crazy. It did do the downloads in the background, so it might have done that first, and now it's installing. So well, that could take a while, but I have a very fast internet connection, so God only knows what the hell it installed or what it downloaded and is installing. Well, holy mother of Mary, apparently it looks like there is a Christ in heaven. We can now restart and enjoy our installation. Let's go ahead and do that. Now 
Woohoo! Let's go, baby Zorn. Let's go. This is me. Let's log in. Okay, so this is what you're greeted with when you log in. Welcome to Zorin OS 17. I'm not going to take the tour. Well, nah, screw that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings. And we're going to go down to displays. And we're going to increase this resolution to a more human appealing looking one and there we go and we're going to keep these changes and now we're back at it so we can close out of this and call it good now okay so the first thing i'd like to say is aesthetically out of the box the background is not a, just a zorin wallpaper with their logo which is great it's actually a picture i don't have an issue with that it could be a better picture you know, maybe something a little bit more higher resolution. I, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to be too ticky tacky, but it's it's not the standard, just like a logo branded wallpaper or whatever. So it's it's kind of nice. The bar being white, though. I mean, why why do systems still not default to darker, you know, layouts like this? I mean, why do I have to go to um there see why did i have to do that i couldn't have just come to that right off the bat you know i mean so there's that so now the i'll get into this part later um zorn os historically um to me zorn os is known for the the custom layout switcher that it has uh, it was one of the first ones to come out with that custom layout switcher where you could change the theme from the bar and all that good stuff so where the bar's at and the way it looks to make it look more like windows versus mac versus linux versus whatever that's the thing but that is about it as far as it was concerned other than the fact that in the day when it was incepted it also installed the third-party codex a lot like linux mint it was they were rivaling linux mint back in the day they're both based off of ubuntu one took the mint greeny approach this one took the more window-esque approach this was the one that most people looked to when they sought out to transition from windows to linux and in a video that i got coming out on making that switch from windows to linux this is a great one to start out for if you are they do make a free version the difference is is it doesn't come with some of the applications that it has in it that this one has in it but and the the custom out layout switcher only has like four or five different custom layouts you can switch to but that's about it otherwise it's like 40 bucks to get the pro and you get a couple of extra added programs and you get a couple of extra customizations for the bar and the the, the layout so in the end if you have the money to support great buy the pro it's forty dollars if you don't then don't worry about it you're not really missing anything and if you want to make a donation down the road because you really fall in love with it buy the pro or just make a donation you can certainly do that and i always advise i always promote you know making donations to projects because that's keeps the doors on the lights on people in the in the in the seats working and that kind of stuff so that all only helps out so this is what you're met with this desktop with this toolbar at the bottom now that we've customized it made it you know more actually appealing where you could actually see it better it looks just like your typical standard layout standard layout you know whether it be kde whether it be xfce cinnamon mate whatever this is believe forked off of um gnome because when you go to the settings, is that the settings? No. Yep. This is a gnome fork. It's your layout. If you go to your settings, this is the gnome display settings right here. You can tell. Uh, no, we are not going to do any software updates. Wait, why am I having to do updates if I just freaking installed, when I clicked install the updates, you know, on the thing? This is insane. Remind me later. Yeah, well, that's kind of bonkers. But anyhow, so yeah, this is your GNOME thing. If you go and you go to help, yeah, it doesn't give you that. The, the thought it might give you the 
the version, but either way, this is GNOME, and so either way, this is, you know, the, 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 ah, oh, right here is about, yeah, oh, this is about the system, okay, it doesn't tell you what, what that app was, okay, but either way, that is definitely GNOME. So if you want to, you know, look at the different applications, it's got your standard applications. I mean, it's probably got everything you need in here. You know what I mean? For clocks, you got files, you know, the GNOME files. Yep, see? The weather, the text editor, you got all that good stuff. You go back, just kind of like Windows, and it's categorized. For Internet, you've got Firefox and Rimina. As far as graphics is concerned, you have Image Viewer and Photos. You have for Office, uh, they installed the LibreOffice suite for multimedia or sound and video. You should have quite a bit. You have Brazero, Cheese, you have Rhythmbox, Sound Recorder, and it uh, looks like MPV. For system tools, you've got a ton of stuff. Software updater, you got the Zorn appearance, you got all that good stuff, which we'll take a look at in GNOME Discs, which is a very awesome little tool. This is definitely a basic little version that they have here for utilities. It's got all these extra utilities that are in here. Ah, dang it. Why did I click on calculator? So what it is is I've got a new trackball mouse that the boys talked me into getting. Matt over at the Linux cast. Thank you for that. I'm still getting used to it, but it's actually not bad at all. And so, anyhow, you've got some of the, their, you know, specific tools in here. Like, um, we won't look at Zorn Appearance, but we'll look at Zorn Connect. And it's connecting your, it, it, it's a way for, like, KDE Connect or whatever, where if you download Zorn Connect, you can, uh, you can connect your phone to the computer and all that good stuff. Uh, also, you can sync, you know, via the core, just like any other Linux distribution. But uh, either way, so that's what Zorn Connect is. So, I mean, they've got a couple of proprietary programs. Well, I don't know if they're open source, but I mean, they're probably coded on open source, but they're proprietary by being they're, they're branded to them. But they've got, you know, some programs that they've created for themselves in here, kind of like MX Linux. So there's that to look at. Now, let's look at the Zorn appearance, because this is really the whole crux of this damn thing. With Zorn appearance, you can basically, with the basic one, you can only do this and the theme. As far as effects are concerned, I don't think you could do that in the regular basic one but you can in the pro basically all it is is a front end for gnome extension or gnome effects gnome extensions and stuff like that for interface you got you can adjust your title bar buttons and all that good stuff and also for your desktop you can add icons to the desktop and that kind of stuff you can do the standard size or not you know for fonts of course is your font manager here you can go to but for your layout this is the part that is Oh, we are on not on the pro. This is the uh, free version. I thought it was a pro version. My bad. Anyway, so with these layouts, so in order to get these extra layouts, you got to do the pro. Interesting. Okay, my bad. I thought this was a pro version. Either way, that's the whole caveat. That's the difference right there with the pro. You pay $40 and you get this and a couple of extra apps. More and more the media apps, I think, like VLC or whatever stuff that you could add your own self. So, this is the one that we're on right now. If we want to say we go to the regular GNOME one, we click that, see, it just on the fly switches it. That's what's cool about this, it just switches like right on the fly. You want to switch to this one? There you go. This one puts the top, the, the bar at the top, and here you go. This is more GNOME. This is like your GNOME experience right here. Here's your apps right here, see. So uh, that's the difference between this one and that one. This one is more, I think, of the Mate one. Not a whole lot of difference there between this one and that one. Yeah. I'm not sure what the difference is other than... Oh, yeah, that's what the difference is right there. It shows you, like, when your apps are open, you see, like, this is open here. It's just an icon for it, right? Where this one actually shows you the window right here. There's the window right there. So that's the difference right there. So, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, that's cool. I mean, and then if you go to these other layouts, like... 
down here and you click on here and obviously it's going to tell you where you can upgrade your zorin to get your your extra layouts but it's taking forever their servers are slow i ain't got time for this anyhow so that is basically the main difference between zorin well that is look at zorin basic and zorin professional as far as the software center is concerned this is just your standard gnome software center uh you know it, it's not like i said you're not getting anything extra out of zorin os that you can't get on just regular gnome i mean you can set up your gnome extensions your gnome you know different different things you could add on into gnome for for you know like making it better like you can even add whisker menu you know all that good stuff i mean it's just i don't i get zorin and what they did for linux and back in the day with actually creating a distribution that was much needed but they've kind of been outpaced and they haven't done anything in my mind's eye honestly they almost need to revamp just being honest they need to to bring some better modernization to it because realistically the people that are coming over to linux from windows are not like they were back years ago decades ago almost a decade or plus more that zorn's been around when they were where people were still used to this kind of experience i mean and had the people didn't have a whole lot of computing experience at all most people that are making a switch from windows to linux nowadays actually have had technology talk to them in their schools and grew up with it you know like coding or you know different you know H html stuff i mean they've actually grown grown up with a keyboard in their hand for the most part so that that's where i think they're getting outpaced now is zorin a a good os i'm gonna say yes it is you know it, it it works it works out of the box it's based off of a very stable distribution and it has purpose so really i can't knock it on that they just need to modernize it really to make it more relevant again and i hope i'm not trying to be too harsh on them or sound like i'm coming off harsh because it is definitely a distribution that i would recommend to people if it fits your bill great but ideally aesthetically i think that a lot of people are not going to find that it fits their bill so that being said y'all leave a comment down below let me know what you guys think about zoran os i i apologize for the error i thought this was a pro version i might have misread some communication and thought something but no this is the basic but either way that is a look at zorin leave a comment tell me if you like it or you don't also if you've used it in the past and you got rid of it why you, you didn't use it anymore did you outgrow it what is the reason also if you haven't found out you know about our discord hey jump in our discord it's growing every day it's absolutely great you get some of the boys in there like tyler come in there you know different people come you know to the, to the discord all the time or we hang out in their discord but it's like a whole community that's going on so anyway, I'll tell you guys, y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linux and stay safe, stay blessed. And above all, I will see you in the very next one.